It says 11. It says a... Hello? Sorry, what did you say, Kian? On YouTube, it says that the stream is starting at 11. It says 11? What the heck? No, 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 the, um... The video is being released at 11, not the, um... Okay, I'll explain it all in a second. Sorry about that, buddy. Hi, guys. Good morning. Had a bit of confusion there. Um, so welcome. Good morning. Uh, this is uh, our weekly live stream, the Chromeworks Club. I wanted to explain to you guys uh, what's happening. Keen here just got a little bit confused by what was going on because it said that the, um, the video uh, was starting at 11. Um, we're what i'm doing every week now as i said is i'm going to run this show uh, for about an hour or so every morning and then right after we're done we're going to release the um the weekly lesson which has been pre-recorded now so because these have been really long lessons in some cases over an hour and in some cases rather than having you guys sit through the live stream and me always getting a little bit confused by um you know, step problems come up during coding and things happen that I'm not expecting. And then you guys have to sit around waiting for me to figure it out. So um, I've decided to streamline it, right? So we're gonna be doing some different fun stuff during this session where we're talking about everything involving Scratch, how to get the most out of your projects, how to do some cool new techniques, um, any news that comes up in Scratch, some new apps that you can use to um, to get graphics and stuff going with, uh, with Scratch and um, all the normal stuff. So, um, so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, that kind of fun stuff on our stream. Um, but that that uh, weekly lesson that we've been doing for quite a while now is just going to be released at eleven o'clock. So, Kian's the only person I see on here. If you're um, if you're over on YouTube, please type in and say hello. Um, I'm pretty sure that I didn't list my live stream as starting at 11, but let me have a quick look and make sure whether I've confused people here. I'm pretty sure I had 11 o'clock for, um, for the release of the video, not for the release of the live stream. But let me just double check that here to make sure that I haven't messed something up. Uh, just one second, guys. Sorry about that. So here's my videos live. Yeah, it says I'm live now. I, I don't uh, know what the schedule actually said for the thing, but let's see. So uh, Gamer Davey's in here. He figured it out, Davey. It did say 10 o'clock on the, I'm pretty sure it said 10 o'clock on the live stream. So there's two things that you're going to see on YouTube relating to my, um, to my broadcast. It's going to be the live stream starting at 10 and then the uh, game or project of the week that's going to start at 11 o'clock just so you guys know for the future anyway okay we got some great stuff lined up for you today so uh, i'm going to show you the project of the week which is more of an art project this time i'm going to teach uh, show you a little bit about that i'm also going to uh, teach you a little bit about, about layer order and how to make stuff look like it's going in front of or behind things in scratch we're going to do that during our block of the week segment we're going to do an extreme makeover. I know that, that um, Thane is in Montana this week, but if he's watching, um, he should know that, um, that I'm going to be remixing one of Thane's projects this week to, uh, to do like an image gallery. And we're going to show you how to do a really nice looking image gallery in Scratch. We're going to be working on that. And I'm going to show you a new program that you can use to get funky graphics into your um, scratch, uh, uh, funky text effects and stuff into your Scratch projects. Scratch has limited ability to do text. There's some things you can do, but um, but often if you want to do really nice graphics. Um, you have to bring it in from other programs. So we're going to be working um, on that today as well. So there's all kinds of fun stuff on the go. So uh, Gamer Davies with us again and Kian's with us. And I'm not seeing anyone else online right now. If uh, you want to shout out on the stream, go ahead and um, and type in or uh, or say hi in, um, in Discord if you're interested in joining us. Okay, let's uh, do a little bit of coding. Well, first I want to show you our project of the week. So let's give you a preview of that, guys. 
So our project of the week is do-it-yourself animated sprites, basically how to take a, a lifeless piece of clip art and bring it into Scratch and turn it into an animated guy with his arms and legs moving around. Scratch has lots of great sprites in it, but sometimes you're working on a specific project, particularly, oh, I've got this thing hanging in the background. Let me get rid of that. Oh, my whiteboard. There we go. That's looking better now. Um, so Scratch has some great projects, but if you're doing a project for school or something like that, for example, you're going to run into some trouble with not having the sprites you're looking for. If I'm doing a project on ancient Egypt, for example, you're not going to find an ancient Egyptian sprite inside Scratch. So where do you get this kind of stuff from? Well, there's lots of websites that have free clip art graphics, but the problem with those is that um, the the sprites that you bring into Scratch from those programs are going to be like mannequins. They're going to be frozen in place, right? So is there a way to bring those guys to life? And so what I'm teaching you this week is how to cut the arms and legs into separate pieces, not inside Scratch, but inside a video editing program. Scratch isn't very good at this because it's not very good at isolating parts of an image. Um, it only The tools you have for erasing and manipulating objects are um, are um, they work off of boxes and so you can't do irregular shapes with them which is really really frustrating so i'm going to show you today how to take a piece of clip art like this one here this is a website called free pick that i've been using for quite a while that has lots of great graphics in it this is the actual graphic that i'm using from free pick you can see that there's a bunch of medieval images here ki basically kids wearing um knight and king costumes and stuff i'm going to take this guy and bring him into scratch during our and I'll teach you guys how to bring him to life and have his arms and legs and head move around. And that's uh, what we're basically up to. Let me show you the finished project and what that looks like. So you can see that this piece of clip art, we've manipulated it so that now he's moving his arms and legs around. And he really looks like a much more cool um, uh, graphic. So this uh, file, I've saved it. It's inside. Um, I've shared it, and it's available in my Mr. Tomek um, um, under my account on Scratch. You can look me up there and and uh, make friends with me there, or you can look at the description of this video, and you'll find a link to this. If you do want to use this graphic in your own files, or just have a look at what I did with it, that's great. But we'll have the detailed lesson on how to get to create this sprite um, released at 11 o'clock today. So that's going to be our lesson of the week. All right. Um, now, anyone who else who's watching, I, uh, a couple of you guys here from Ottawa in particular, I am um, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm really interested in teaching more beginner scratch lessons. You guys have, uh, over the course of the summer in my COVID computer camp, a lot of you guys have gotten really, really good at at Scratch, and you've probably gone back to your own classrooms and um, you're telling your um, friends all about the cool things that you've been doing here. I would like to get some of your classmates involved in, um, in learning Scratch as well, and I'd like to team up with some teachers in the Ottawa area or even beyond. Um, the, the, the live stream that I'm doing here is really um, able to connect with people all over the world. We've got people in England and um, especially in England who are big fans of mine who are, who are following me. And there's lots of other um, countries where I've seen people pop in and out of the stream um, who are also participating. So uh, if what I'd love to do is start live streaming my very first lesson, Cat and Mouse, and do it at a specific time when, during the school day so that your class will, especially kids who are running remotely right now, who are part of a remote class, they, they might be able to log in, watch me teach that beginner lesson in Scratch, and then um, I could be hanging around the, on the live stream, answering questions, um, debugging things, and showing you how it all works. So I'm, it's still in the early stages right now, but that's kind of what I'm planning for October, I think, is that uh, once a week, basically, probably on Tuesday, I'm going to be getting online at a specific time, probably in the morning. And any classroom that wants to join me and learn a little bit of Scratch with me can do that. I'm going to see how it works, but if uh, anyone who's watching, if you're interested in mentioning it to your teachers and getting a sense of uh, whether they're interested in it, I'd um, love to hear back from you. You could, guys can all find me on Discord, those of you who are on Discord, and if not, you can email me at info at chromeworks.ca and, um, and let me know. Invite your teacher to contact me as well. I'd love to set something up where, um, 
where your guys are, where your classes are learning this stuff. Um, because I think um, the scratch the work that we've been doing here is really, really useful for kids on all kinds of levels. It teaches you creativity and problem solving and critical thinking. Here in Ontario, uh, Canada, we've um, just put coding into the curriculum for the first time now for elementary schools. So teachers everywhere have to start paying attention to this stuff. And um, it's something that I think um, I can help you guys out with if you're interested. So just so you know. Um, all right. So um, let me show you our block of the week project. That's what we're going to next. So um, I'm going to share this file link with you guys in the chat. Anyone who's interested can, uh, can log in and work along with me. So um, I'll just paste that into the chat. And I'll paste it into the um, stream notifications over here in Discord as well, if anyone's following me there. So just click on that link and open it up. And we're going to start working on this, these files. I'd invite you to work along with me if you're interested. Um, so I've got a file here that is using this knight figure that I just created in today's lesson. Um, I've coded him already to move around when I click the green flag. Let's have a look at him right now. You can see that he's coded so that he waves his arms and legs and uh, walks around as we're doing this. So this is looking pretty good already. Um, if you, uh, you can see the code. I'm not going to explain all the details of it, but um, in a nutshell, let me just tell you what's going on. So as well as the normal movement script, we move left. When I hit the left arrow, we change our X coordinate. We're also setting this variable called moving which just checks to see if he's moving. And if he's moving, it'll rifle through his costume. Not all his costumes, because he has some costumes that are not walking. So what I've done here is tell him to switch to costume, um, the costume called Night Walking, which is his first one of three walking costumes. And what our character is going to do here is he, he's going to switch to this costume, then keep going to the next costume over and over again and waiting for one second. But if he reaches that last costume, costume seven, it'll go back to this one. So this is a way to get him to cycle through the three costumes. If we just go next costume, of course, he's going to go back up to the top and he's going to have all these costumes where he's not walking and that would look a little silly. So because of the way that we set up this code here with an if statement inside an if statement, basically while he's moving, this if statement's going to be running, changing the costume. But if we get to costume seven, the last costume, it'll switch the costume back to costume five, which is the costume that um, has us moving. So that's um, the beginning of this. Now, what looks cheesy to me here is the fact that he's moving and there's a tree back here and he's walking on top of the tree, right? I want to create more of a three-dimensional look for this, but how do we go about doing that? We're going to have to make our uh, program smart enough to know when we're behind a tree or when we're in front of it. And so that's what we're going to be working on um, today for a little bit. I just want to teach you guys a little bit about how to do this. The first thing we're going to need to do is turn this tree that's back here into a sprite of its own. Let's go have a look at the backdrop and see what's up here. So I'm going to click on the images tab for the backdrop. You can see it's just one piece, but it's been grouped together. If I grab this, um, this ungroup uh, button here and click on that, you can see that um, I've suddenly created new chunks of stuff here. I've got this tree here, and I've got this tree here, and now we can move them around however we like. We can also copy paste them somewhere else. So what I'm gonna do with this tree is I'm gonna copy it with this button right here. I think that my screen magnifier is not working for some reason. Let's get that running before I uh, get any further here. Magnifier. There we go. That'll just help you guys see what I'm working on a little bit better. I'm not sure why that wasn't running to start with. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're zooming in and zooming out beautifully. Okay, so I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna copy him, put him into my computer's memory. Now I don't want him in the background anymore. There's no cut feature in Scratch. So I'm just gonna, I wanna get him out of the background. I'm just gonna hit the delete key. So now we're gonna create a new sprite over in our sprites commands here. Um, so let's go over to paint new sprite. I'm going to click on the little paint button. 
and we're going to paste it here. So I'm just going to go up to the paste tab here and click on the paste button. Okay, so now I've got a tree that I can actually move around the screen, right, which is really cool. It doesn't have a top on it, so there's limits to where I can move it. I could change the size of it a little bit maybe and move it down. So let's, uh, let's increase the size maybe to 130 and I'll bring it down the screen. Um, I'm going to make more than one tree, but we'll copy it later. I'm just going to start with this one tree. So the code that we're going to do today basically is going to be, we're going to be coding inside the tree. And what we're going to be doing is trying to get the, um, trying to get the tree to figure out whether it's in the front or the back. And that's where our block of the week comes in, right? So our block of the week is this um, go to front layer button, which also turns into a go to back layer button. Now, if we, we overlap my character on top of the tree here, you can see that he's in front of the tree right now. But as soon as I click the other sprite, the if I try to grab this guy and move him around, he moves to the front. By default, Scratch always moves whatever you've last touched to the front. But we don't want to leave those kind of chances. Um, we don't want to leave this to chance, right? We want to actually make sure that we're the ones who are picking, not accident picking what's going to be at the front here. So we're going to use that coding command, go to front or go to back layer to determine um, whether the, the tree is on the front or my character is on the front, right? Let's start with a green flag and I'll show you guys how to code this. When green flag, and we'll put a forever block in there as well. Let's go to our control blocks and grab a forever. So we're going to be checking forever. What is the aspect of our tree here that we actually want to, um, to figure out here to, to know whether it's going to be in the front or the back? Really, it's a matter of how high I am on the screen, what my X coordinate is. If I'm over here, and I'm and my tree is over here that means I'm going to be in front of the tree and the way that we know is not that I'm placed in front of the tree but where my y coordinate is so when my work y coordinate is less than what the trees is I should be in the front of it but when I move up my y coordinate will move up until the point where it's bigger than the y coordinate of the tree as well and so when that happens, I'm supposed to move to the back. It's a little bit trickier than that, but let's start with that anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and code this. I'm going to put an if else statement in there. You guys remember an if else statement is a statement where if something is true, it's going to do whatever is inside here. But if it's not true, it's going to say, well, I guess I should do this instead. So it's always it's like a multiple choice where it only has two choices of what it can do. It's going to either do this or do this depending on whether this statement that I put in here is true. What's the thing I want to know? I want to know what my X coordinate is and whether it's less than the other guy's X, uh, X coordinate. So I'm going to go grab a less than sign from my operators here. Less than. And now I need something that says my Y position. So, uh, or sorry, the Y position of the tree. When I say my, it's, a, it's of the sprite that I'm working on right now. So right now I'm inside the tree. So I want to know the tree's Y coordinate. We're going to go over to our motion blocks and we're going to grab one of these little bubble blocks that says Y position and pop it into this hole here. So if my Y position is less than the Y position of my knight, then theoretically this should work. So how do I find the Y coordinate of my knight? I can use one of these reporter blocks that I've talked about many times on my, my broadcast here. Here it is, it says, uh, no, no, here it is, it's down here. It says backdrop of stage. I'm gonna pop that into the hole here. So on the right hand side, this block has a list of all the other sprites other than my tree sprite here, because I can't select my own sprite in here. This is to get information about other sprites or about the stage. I'm going to pick my night sprite and then as soon as that happens this window on the left here changes and now I have access to all the information I want about the night. I'm interested in the Y position of my sprite so I'm going to click on Y position here. So now if, if the tree's Y position is less than the Y position of the night then we're going to go to the front. So let's grab this block here and say go to front. I'm going to duplicate it and underneath it I'm going to say go to back. So it's always going to be either at the front or at the back. Now this isn't quite working properly yet guys for a good reason. Let me explain it to you. So let me just test it out here and I'll show you what's going on. 
So it's working fairly well. I'm at the front here, and when I move to the back, I'm at the back. But the problem is that, look at this. I move a little bit down, and it brings me to the front. It doesn't... So as far as it's concerned, my y-coordinate and the tree's y-coordinate, so my guy is now at a lower y-coordinate than the other guy. What? He's not actually in front of the tree, though, right? Because the front of the tree is at the bottom of the tree. The problem here is that Scratch is um, assuming where things are based on where their center is, right? So my, let's go have a look at our sprites here. So here's the sprite for my tree. This is where Scratch thinks the um, the Y coordinate of my tree is, right to the left and in the middle of the tree. So when I'm um, when it's trying to figure out whether the tree is on the same Y coordinate as me, it's looking right here. In order to fix this, I'm going to have to move my whole tree graphic. Oh, it's it's uh, grouped and or it's ungrouped. So let's be careful about moving it. I'm going to undo. Let's actually group it so that I can move it without tearing it apart into pieces. I'm going to grab it and go group. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move this tree over so that the center of it is actually at the bottom. So now when I'm asking what the Y coordinate of the tree is, it's actually going to tell me that the Y coordinate is the spot where it touches uh, where it touches this crosshairs here, right at the bottom of it. So now it'll know that as soon as I get in front of the, t as soon as my Y coordinate gets in front of the bottom of the tree, that's where I'm going to go. Now my knight has the same problem. I should theoretically move him over so that he, his feet are at the bottom here so that we're comparing apples to apples. The problem with that though is I have all these costumes here and once I start moving them around, things are going to get messed up. I'm going to move one and he's not going to line up with the other ones and it's, your character's going to start to jiggle around. If one of your characters is up like this and another one's like this, he's going to appear to pop. Um, let me stop my file here so you can see these sprites. He's going to appear to, you can, if you have a look inside this window here, he's going to appear to jump up and down. So if I don't uh, perfectly align these guys, everything's going to be messed up. Let me try and see if I can undo that graphical change here. Uh-oh, too late. So I'm going to have to just eyeball this um, to get it back into place. So the one that I moved was this one here. So let's just bring it back down. I think it's right around here. No, a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Okay, so I've already messed this guy up. So the lesson is don't move, um, if you've got multiple costume for a scratch, don't move it to get that Y position of the feet. What we're gonna do instead is use a little bit of math to offset this so that it's looking not at where his feet are, but it's gonna be looking at the center and then looking a certain degree, a uh, number of pixels below the center. I'm estimating it's about 50 pixels, um, though we're gonna, we can play around with numbers and see how that works. So I'm gonna change my code now uh, inside my tree to say, so let's pull this reporter block out here and we're gonna go, uh, tell it to subtract from this Y position of the tree. We're going to subtract 50 from it, and that will make it so that we're referring not to the middle of our of our um, character. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, we're um, Y position of knight minus 50. Oh yeah, okay, so we're going inside the tree here, and we're telling it to compare itself not to where the knight is, but to 50 pixels below where the center of the knight is, which just happens to be where his feet are. So let's put a subtraction marker in there, right here in our math positions. So we're going to put the Y position back in the left side of our math here, and I'm going to go minus 50. So we're gonna say if my Y position is less than a spot 50 pixels below the center of my knight, then we're gonna to go to the front layer and otherwise I'm gonna to go to the back. Let's try this out again and have a look and see how this works differently now. So um, I'm gonna walk in front of the tree here and I'm gonna try and get behind it. So as soon as I go here, I'm behind the tree. And when I walk down a little bit further, I'm in front of it. It's not quite perfect. Right? Oh, it's actually looking pretty good. So this spot here, I should be behind the tree. So if we change that number a little bit, let's try like 45 and see if that works any differently now. So we'll go back to our, oh, I, 
I changed it in the wrong area of my code. I mean, on the wrong window here. Let's try 45 here. And so let's see if that's any different now. Oh, actually, I think it should, the number should be lower than 50 or higher than 50 rather than lower than 50. Let's try 55 instead. We can often figure these things out without even having to do the math just by playing around with them, right? So yeah, as, this is good. So as soon as I walk even a little bit in front of the tree. Okay, so it looks like we're, we got the right number here. So now you can see that I can actually just walk around the tree and it appears that I'm actually in a 3D forest. Really cool. Now the nice thing about this is we can actually create multiple trees now. We've done all the code inside the tree, so we don't have to change anything around here. Let me just stop this. I'm going to make a duplicate of this tree. I'm going to right click on it and select duplicate. Now I've got two trees. I'm going to take the second tree and move it to a new location. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. I'll make it 150. And I'm going to do one more tree here as well. Let's take this one and move it just a little bit down. And uh, let's make a third tree here. Duplicate that one and we'll move it right over here. And we can make it even bigger, uh, maybe 150. No, 180 maybe. Good. All right, so let's try moving around again and see if we can get between these various trees. So green flag. So I'm in front of this tree, behind this tree, in front of this tree, behind this one. And so I can go on my merry way, weaving my way around these trees here. To add some extra coolness, you can even set your software up so that your character shrunk in between. Uh, as the further back it went, the more its Y coordinate went, the, um, the smaller it would get as well. And that would make him look like he was walking farther away. So you can create some really cool fake 3D effects this way without very much code. So it's all about just figuring out where your Y coordinate is and making your thing go to the front or the back, depending on where your Y coordinate is. Really cool, huh? So um, that's all that I have to show you for this particular file. I have um, shared this project. It's called Cromer's Club Layers Experiment. And uh, I will put the address to this in the description for this video if you're interested in finding it, if you're looking at this later on. And, um, and feel free and play around with this uh, as well. Though you can adapt this. I mean, you could take any sprite. But if you really, if you want to use my cool movement um, uh, um, uh, script here and, um, and use that, then that's great. One other uh, function I put in this movement script is a little limiting factor here, where if I try to move my Y coordinate above 50, it will freeze it. And so that's why we can't accidentally walk off the edge of the map. As soon as my Y coordinate gets to be more than 50, it basically refuses to go up anymore. And so that's limiting my movement so that I don't go off the screen or off the area where I'm allowed to walk accidentally. Okay, so much for that. Um, let's move on to our uh, our Extreme Makeover Scratch Edition. I don't have a, um, I'm gonna come up with little uh, video intros to all of these things. So we're gonna do something a little fancier in coming weeks. But for now, um, I'll just kind of announce these segments and we'll do it. So um, Extreme Makeover Scratch Edition is gonna be a weekly feature where we take somebody else's project, a, a project that one of my students has done and put into the Scratch, um, um, a featured scratch projects workshop that I have. It's a remix room that you can find over inside scratch. I'm going to have links to it again in the description here if you're looking for it. So if you have a project in scratch that you've made that you're really proud of that you want to show people, you can save it to our student showcase and we'll show it off to everyone um, in uh, who's who's um, on on stream here. And um, if there's something in it that I think could use some improvement. I'm going to remix it and show it to you guys and we'll do a little scratch lesson based on making your projects a little bit cooler. I don't think Thane's in here today, unfortunately. As I said, he's away on a trip. He said he would try to log in while he was gone, but I don't think he made it. So, um, but I'm still going to be working on Thane's project today. So let's go over and show you that. 
This is Thane's project, it's called Art Gallery, and it's basically him showing off his pixel art projects. So he's done, he's draw, hand drawn a bunch of really cool sprites here um, that he's made, uh, yeah, just by drawing boxes and shapes and stuff inside Scratch. I think Thane has some fantastic art skills going here, and I wanted to show his stuff off. The problem I had was that his objects are too small to really appreciate the great artwork that he's done in here. So what I would like to do is remix this game in such a way that, or this project in such a way that we can just see little thumbnails of his guys over on the side. And then when you hover your mouse over it, it's going to show a big version of a sprite over here on the left. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys how to do today. If you want to try it, work along at home. I have a shared file here that you can use. Um, let's go over to six here. So this is the uh, the version extreme makeover. This is my remixed version that I'm going to be working on here. You can pull this up later on if you want to have a look at this code. Again, I'm going to put the description for this in the um, in the the description for this video so just go ahead and copy paste that into your browser and you get up to this window so all i've done to change thane's file so far is um i have um taken all his sprites and i've shrunk them a little bit these guys are all at 50 percent of the original size and i line them up over on the sides here i also did a little bit of um I'd like to do a little bit of renaming to his sprites so that it makes a bit more sense here. So um, I'm going to rename Donkey Kong here. I'm going to, oh, actually his sprite is called Donkey Kong. This sprite is called Mario. We just want to make sure that, um, and we also want the costume to be named after the sprite for reasons that will become more obvious later. So I'm going to go up to the top here and rename the costume that this guy's carrying, Donkey Kong. I'm uh, not going to do this for every one of the sprites because I think it would just take a lot of time. Um, but I'm going to do it for Mario as well. Mario is a little dot here, which is really strange. I can see everyone else's characters and I can't see Mario. What that usually tells me is that another object somewhere on the screen. Let me show you with Donkey Kong here, for example. If I zoom way out of this file here, um, it's the thumbnail is trying to show me the entire image. And what it thinks for Mario is that the image is much bigger. For example, if I draw a little circle way off here on the edge of the screen, watch and see that Mario, that Donkey Kong's graphic will suddenly change. It's because it's zoomed out and it's trying to show me the entire image, Donkey Kong, plus this little circle that I drew here. So I'd have to shrink everything to fit it into place. So I think there's something invisible inside Mario's file that is that it's trying to show me, but I can't figure out where it is. When I try to highlight something here and delete it, it doesn't, I can't really figure out where it is on the screen. And I was playing around with this file earlier. I have no idea what it is that's messing up his thumbnail, but what I can do to fix this is I'm going to select his whole file. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm just going to grab it. So while it's in my buffer here, I've saved it here forever, so I'm not going to lose it. I'm just going to go Control A to select everything on the screen. And whatever my invisible file is, it looked like it grabbed it here, eh? It's way over here. Wow, this is where he dragged this file here. So what I was going to suggest is just go Control A and delete everything. Though now we know where the object is, we could delete it. But I'm just going to hit Paste. And now our object is back. And look, our thumbnail is fixed now. So I'm going to fix Mario thumbnail and change it to Mario. We're looking good now. So we need the costume to say Mario as well as Donkey Kong to say uh, uh, to. Uh, so we want the costume to say Mario and the sprite to say Mario, basically. And um, we just have to be careful about that. It is, it's going to make sense in the copy in just a sec, in the um, code in just a second here. All right. So um, let's go start coding this now. So. I'm going to want to basically create, when I move my mouse over this character, I want um, to create a clone of this character over in this spot and blow it up in size to make it much bigger. So um, 
when the green flag is clicked, I just want to make sure that I um, have resized my characters properly to 50%. And I'm going to be resizing them again here. So just to make sure that they go back to 50% for the main character and that we don't accidentally resize them, I am going to um, set a resize here. So let's go when green flag clicked. I just want to tell it to go back. If you if you happen to change your size, go back to that 50% size that we set you at before. So I'm going to go set size to 50% so, so that my thumbnails for sure will always be 50%. Okay, um, now let's grab a forever and put it underneath forever. Now, we, we're going to be going through here, basically, we want to switch this on and off. Am I on top of my, my, my guy or not? If I am, we're going to switch on a clone here and make it appear and make it visible. But as soon as I move my mouse away, I want it to become invisible again. So we're going to use a wait for blocks to do that. Uh, we don't want to be, we're going to be creating clones in here. We don't want to be going around in the loop creating clones forever. So the wait for block will basically make sure that our thing lives for the exact amount, exact amount of time that we uh, we want it to. It's going to be waiting to see for when we move our cursor over this Mario character, and then it's going to wait again for when we take our cursor away from it so that it can delete the clone again. So we're, so it, it's, it's going forever here, but the script is actually going to be stopping, waiting, and then restarting, and then stopping and waiting again. And we're just going to constantly be cycling through here, checking to see if my mouse cursor is on here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab a wait until here, which is under our control blocks. And so it's going to be waiting until we're touching the mouse pointer. Let's go to our sensing blocks. We'll grab touching mouse pointer. So now our character is basically, our Mario character is going to wait until I'm, uh, my cursor is on top of them. And as soon as that happens, it's going to go to the next block, which is um, we're going to... Uh, we're going to create a clone of ourselves, right? So we're going to create a clone of Mario. Let's go ahead and create a clone under our control blocks. All right. Now uh, we're going to have that clone appear over uh, in another area here. But so we're going to tell it to create it. We have to do that inside when I start as a clone. So let's go ahead and we'll go and we'll add a block here that says when I start as a clone and we'll tell it to go to a certain location here. Go to, I'm gonna enter minus 100 and zero, and that's gonna just put it into a spot right around here. It's gonna to be to the left by 100 from the center of the screen and exactly in the middle of the screen vertically. And that should be a nice place to display this. Let's click the green flag and see if that works. I'll move my cursor on top of Mario and you can see that a, that a version of Mario appears right here. Perfect. It's not disappearing yet because I haven't told it to disappear. So let's code that next. So right now our, our code is basically waiting. It's it's uh, it's stuck in a loop heat. Now it created it and then it came around and now it's waiting again. We don't want it to wait for me to touch the mouse pointer. Now we want it to wait for me to not touch the mouse pointer. So I'm going to go ahead and go add another wait until block here right underneath here and I'm actually going to add another touching mouse pointer. I've just duplicated that guy. All right. Now um, now I'm waiting until I touch my mouse pointer, but I want to wait until I'm not touching my mouse pointer, right? Until I move my cursor away. So let's go grab a not sign from our operators. Not touching mouse pointer. Here we go. Beautiful. Uh, so now it's waiting until that's not touching. And then, um, now we can't delete our clone down here because under the green flag, anything that we do, uh, if we put a delete this clone, it wouldn't actually work because when I say this clone, it doesn't know which clone I want. If you want to talk to clones, the only way you can talk to them is with a when I started the clone command. If I could put a delete clone here, our clone would disappear. But um, 
but we want it actually to happen at a certain time. So we don't want it to disappear when I started the clone. So we can do it with a message. A message is the other way that you can communicate with sprites. Uh, so with clones, right? So you cannot communicate with clones under the green flag. These commands will only affect the master sprite and not the clone. So let's go up to our events and we'll tell it when I receive message one. So we're going to send a message basically to this, this area here that's going to say delete this clone. And that will get around that problem of us not being able to delete that sprite. So I'm going to go delete the sprite. It's at the bottom of my control blocks and I'll put it under here. And over on this area here, I will say broadcast message one. So it's going to be waiting for me to move my cursor away. Then it's going to send the message over here where it's going to delete the clone. Let's test it out again. Move my cursor, it appears. And when I move my cursor away, it sends that message and deletes the clone. So now I've got my guy appearing, beautiful. Okay, now um, when I started the clone, I'm going to want to bump up my size here. I've, I did some playing around and I figured out 250 was a really good size to resize these two, these guys too. But when I try to resize them to 250, it's not going to work. Let me show you. We're going to go switch uh, change, set size to 250%, which is two and a half times bigger than it is here. But when I click the green flag and restart my program, oh, that is working okay. That's not too bad, actually. All right, sometimes Scratch has trouble um, resizing objects to above a certain size. If you've got something really small and you want to make it big, sometimes you can't. So I'm gonna actually, uh, I showed you guys one of the, uh, this in a different project before, but I, if you're having trouble, so right now this script works perfectly with Mario, but if it's not working, if you're finding your character isn't getting big enough, so let's say I wanted this guy up to 500%, for example, it's going to be way too big. But I want you to see that when I when I tell Scratch to resize it to 500, oh, it is. Isn't that weird? Um, sprites are above a certain size. It doesn't want to resize them. It'll always max you out, basically, and tell you that you're not allowed to. Um, so above a certain amount, you're not allowed to, to max size on things. It looks like um, this is working pretty nicely though, so I'm not sure whether we need to go through the trouble of reworking this code. You know what, I'm just going to um, leave this the way that it is because I, I thought we were going to run into trouble. We'd have to do something a little bit more complicated here, but it's actually working quite nicely. So I'm going to change this back to 250. And there's our guy, it's working beautifully. So now we've got some code here that's making our, uh, our art gallery look a lot nicer. We could put some text across the top here saying gallery. We could do some other stuff to make this look funky. We could put a picture frame or something here for, the, for our objects to go into. I'm gonna be um, duplicating this in a second. And um, actually, I think I can do it right now. So if I want this to happen to, um, to Donkey Kong as well, all I have to do is take all of this code. Nothing here has to be modified. Well, just one, actually, I think, yeah, I think we're actually good to go here. So let's go and drag all this copy, these um, blocks over to Donkey Kong and see if we can get that working now. So again, click the green flag. So I'm gonna move my mouse over Mario, that's good, and over Donkey Kong, we're good, wow. So we can actually take all three blocks of these code and move it over to all our characters now. And I'm not gonna do it for the rest of them. There's a link, you can see that it works by when I click the green flag, he appears here as well. If you need to tweak where some of these guys are, each one of them has this go-to code. So Link, for example, is a little bit to the left of where I want him to be. So I'm gonna tell him to go to minus 90. I'm gonna go over to Link here. My code is all in a big mess. So I'm gonna right click and go clean up blocks and that'll get my blocks a little bit more organized. And I'm gonna tell it to go to an X of, or a, yeah, an X of minus 90 instead of minus 100. So I can customize where these guys are to make them go in a better spot. So this guy's looking maybe a little bit further over still. So let's try minus 70 and see what that looks like. There we go, that's looking a little more centered now, eh? 
Okay, beautiful. All right, one other cool feature I want to show you. This is the kind of thing that we can, that you can definitely use this, this, all this code in a school project. If you're doing something where you're talking about parts of a cell, for example, you could have all the different parts of a cell over here and have a description pop up with text and stuff. So you could add the text underneath. For example, I could go in here and say, um, and add Mario underneath. But if I change the sprite around to say Mario, then I'm gonna end up having a Mario text under here. You may or may not want that. Let me show you what that looks like. So I can change the sprite to say Mario underneath it. Let's make it black. So now I have the text for Mario here, and it also shows up here as well, right? I'm going to show you a little bit of more of a sophisticated method, though, where we can make the word Mario appear um, underneath without having it here in this object. So that if you want to put more text, like if I wanted to put a description, Mario, the main character in um, all the Donkey Kong games, etc., um, I could uh, I can put more of a description here. If I just have one word in the thumb thumbnail here. I'm not going to be able to write any more words than that. So I'm going to tell it to show a screen underneath here that has some text on it. Let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to go and um, I am going to, oh, I do want to make some changes to these characters. So the, the stuff that we did inside Donkey Kong and Link, we're going to have to make changes to that again later. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete uh, all the coding that I put inside Donkey Kong here. I'm just going to go delete 15 blocks and I'm going to delete the code inside the link as well because we're just going to copy over the updated code later on. It's going to make more sense. Okay, so we're going to get this new feature running. Let's go ahead and we'll go paint a new sprite. And inside here, we're going to type Mario again. Now we wanted a nice size. We're going to put it, let's place it right around. Why can't I move it? Oh, it's because I'm still editing it. So I'm going to click to, on the black arrow tool, and now I should be able to, oh yeah, now I can move these guys around. Okay, I'm going to move Mario underneath where I think Mario's character is. Uh, now, this is an important part. I'm going to rename this costume Mario, and I'm going to spell it the same way as the name of the costume. You're going to see in a second why that's important. All right. Now I'm going to create a second costume here. And that costume, I'm going to change the text to say Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong or Kogan. All right. Donkey Kong. I've still typed it wrong. My typing is a little off today, guys. All right. I want to make sure this guy's centered because I don't want them appearing wonky. So you, the easy way to center stuff in Scratch is if you hold it down, you see it, the center of the sprite and the, and the center of the object that we've drawn here. You overlap them with each other and it kind of snaps into place. And then I know my object is centered on the screen. And when I change costume, that's not gonna wiggle around. There we go, that's looking beautiful now. So I've got my second costume has to be renamed Donkey Kong as well, and it has to be named the same way as the last time. So up here, Donkey Kong. There we go. So now I've got both costumes named up here in this window with the exact same name as the name of the sprite that I'm going to be using later on. Okay, let's go back to our code for Mario. We're going to modify it a little bit right now. So um, we're going to create a new variable first that's so called Featured Sprite. So the sprite, the name of the sprite that's in here is going to be what's going to go into that variable. So let's go ahead and make a variable. It's called Featured Sprite. There we go. Okay. So my Featured Sprite um, is going to be the one that I currently have my mouse over. So um, my uh, my feature sprites are going to be here in these costumes. It's going to pay attention to which of these costumes is here. I'm going to do a new costume here, and I'm going to call it blank, B-L-A-N-K. And that one's going to have nothing in it. So rather than hiding it, I'm just going to have it show a blank sprite when I'm not doing it. And then I don't have to worry about hiding and showing so I'm going to tell it at the beginning, back to Mario again, I'm going to tell it 
um, set featured sprite to blank. There we go. And it's going to know to switch to that costume later on when I code inside that object. Now, um, right here in this spot where I'm waiting until the mouse pointer is pointing at Mario, I'm going to say once that happens, I'm going to change that variable. I'm going to set my featured sprite to the name of the costume that I'm wearing right now. The name of my costume right now is Mario. So it's gonna, that's going to basically send the information over to the other guy saying that Mario is the costume that I'm wearing right now. So I, um, I need to find a bubble here that says costume name. It's over in looks towards the bottom. bottom. There's one here that says costume number. I'll change it to costume name and pop that into the hole here where the variable is. So we're telling it to change that variable to the same information as the name of our costume here. And this is how we're going to send our current costume name over to this sprite here that has the text on it. Okay, and um, when we're done, when we move our cursor away, we're going to want to set this featured sprite back to zero. So let's do that again so we don't have to go back here again. So let's just go set featured sprite to costume name or no sorry to blank we're going to type in blank here again there we go spelling's really important with these things when you type information here by the way or when you type in the name of these sprites so just be really cautious about that guys um all right so that's all the code we have to do for here i'm just going to go ahead and copy that back to donkey kong now that we've updated it good now, let's go over to Sprite 1. I'm going to rename this Sprite. I don't like misnamed Sprite, so we're going to call this text, I think. Not really important to our coding here, but just so you know. So now we want the text to show up on the screen and show whatever the information is, or to show the costume that has this, the featured Sprite in it. So first of all, I'm going to go green flag under my text here. When green flag is clicked, let's zoom this a little bit. And I'm going to put a forever underneath here. I'm going to tell my costume to switch to featured sprite. So let's go switch costume, looks, switch costume to whatever the, the name of the costume we're going to pick here is going to be the information that's saved in that variable called featured sprite. So let's go grab a bubble that says featured sprite from our variables. So now we're going to switch from donkey from blank to this Mario costume, the one named Mario, which also happens to say Mario, right? That's looking good. Now, uh, we need to tell it to go to go back to the blank when we move our cursor away. We already know that when we receive message one, we're going to delete our clone. So that's a good time to hide our sprite as well. So we're going to switch our costume, switch costume back to blank again here. All right, let's go have a look. Um, yeah, so at the beginning, we're going to switch. Hold it. Uh, featured. Oh, yeah, Featured Sprite is going to start off as blank. So that should work out nicely here. Let's click the green flag. There we go. So now our text is invisible and our Mario a Sprite hasn't been created yet. When I move my cursor over to Mario, you'll see that the text appears underneath it. So I could put a whole bunch of text under there, like a text description of what Mario is and then make his character smaller here. And that's one of the ways you could do a project where you're displaying information um, for uh, your teacher to see about what you've learned about a certain thing. So you could have, if you were doing Medieval Knights, like we were doing e earlier, we could have one here for the knight, one for the king, one for the nobility, one for the peasants, for example. And you could, you could describe under here what they do, um, what they did in the medieval, uh, the feudal economic system, right? So that's an example of how you could use this for a school project or for a photo gallery like this. I really think this is a great idea for a photo gallery. So I'm sorry Thane wasn't here to see this, um, but um, it's actually um, 
quite a cool little project and and i was just looking at his work um last week and i was really impressed so maybe we'll talk to thane about this next week when he's back from vacation so if you want to um to try this out for yourself you can go ahead you'll find the uh file description for for this file up until this point inside um the description for this and go ahead and do that um i forgot to mention for the project of the week that um that we're going to um sorry for our remix of the week i'm really encouraging you guys to also enter a remix of the week if you want to take my file that i already made remixed here and add it to our to a remix room i will i would love to see what you guys do with our um remix of the week which was um this one, yeah, sorry, the art the art gallery project. So if you want to try remixing uh, Thane's art gallery project and moving it to our extreme makeover file, you can work with my code or do something totally different with it as well. So how would you do an image gallery if you wanted to do it? If you want to um, come up with, um, with your own idea, remix um, Thane's file and then save it to the remix room and you'll find the um, the URL for the remix room inside the description here. Um, and I think we're basically ready here. I want to get Jeffrey on for a second. I'm not sure if he's listening. So um, I'll just text him right now on Discord just so that he, he so that he comes on. So I'm inviting Jeffrey on to the um, Discord here to um, in a couple of minutes to talk about the project that we're doing next week. I've been teasing you guys that I'm going to be working on an RPG game, and I've got Jeffrey busily coding that, and we're going to be teaching it. Now, this is going to be the start of something new here for Chromeworks. We're going to be doing a, a multi-part series where we're actually building it along the way. So, um, so we're going to start working on a big project a uh, rpg game that has all kinds of different bits and pieces to it so we're going to do it a little bit at a time we're going to get the movement system going in the first week and then we're going to talk about objects and monsters and uh, creating new rooms and we're going to do a, a fairly big rpg game where um, you have to move around from room to room picking up keys fighting monsters unlocking doors and getting back to um to the, your starting position to win again so it's not a um an arcade game as much as a lengthier video game where where there where we can you can add your own bits and pieces you you're going to be able to take this game and modify it and make all your own new levels change the graphics around and do some other cool stuff and i'm going to teach you all that along the way so we're going to be working on this over the course of several weeks but i think it's going to be um really cool so i'm excited about that is jeffrey on yet i don't think he is oh he is hi Je hi jeffrey so this is my son jeffrey though those of you who haven't met him he's a master coder he's 17 years old and he's uh doing some fantastic coding tell us what you've been working on lately jeffrey uh, so i've been well, i've been working on the like you just mean in, in, in terms or oh in no it, in in general we're gonna talk about rpg maker in a second i just we've been talking over uh, a little bit about um your project yaw project i just wanted to give people an update oh. on how that's going yeah i've been uh been making a video game over the last uh like good since like the start of quarantine it's uh it's turned out pretty fun i'm hoping to release it in like a month or two uh it's been a lot of a lot of uh internet stuff networking trying to trying to teach one computer how to talk to another computer it's a it's a terrible experience to do <laughs> yeah it's I mean, getting closer networking is one of the most complicated things inside um um inside um game development it's just a really really complicated thing so jeffrey's really been struggling with that so project yeehaw which is the um the file that he's been uh, the uh, game that he's been working on let me show you a um a screenshot from it right now i'm just going to drag it over to my window so it's a western um uh, pvp shooter game that's set in hell um, he's got some very deep dark landscapes here that are really cool here's a uh, a uh, scene from it this is a scene from the railway scene where that where this railway car going these two railway trains going through hell um the the tracks actually materialize in front of the track in front of the train and then disappear behind it so that's a really cool example of one of the images he has going here yeah. There's not a whole lot of footage of the game actually playing right now, mm -hmm. um, but there's going to be soon. I'm just patching out some last networking things. Yeah. Be, I'll have like some kind of trailer up probably pretty soon. 
Yeah, uh, and so he... for anybody that's been interested in seeing some real gameplay of it, that's that is coming. Yeah, so here's a, another little quick screenshot showing um, a, a scene from the game. It's re it's really coming along quite nicely, and I think we're going to be releasing it on, or Jeffrey's going to be releasing it on Steam um, sometime in the next month or so. I would imagine that's your I, schedule. As soon as I can, really. Yeah. I yeah. like I it, yeah. it's um it could be. Uh, like a month or two it could be like four weeks i'm really not sure right um, so so anyway so that's what jeffrey's been working on in his time but i got him uh, working on this rpg game that i'm going to show you guys now so um why don't you tell us a little bit about it and i'll just kind of play it in the background here while uh, while our friends are looking at it okay so this is just the first like starter template bit of it I, and there's going to be a lot more I'm just, I was just working on like the base character movements and controls and stuff like that. But um, the whole thing is very systems driven. I'm trying to make it so you can change it in however you want and have it still function. Um, now there, this is with like naming conventions and stuff. You need to be named, if you're, if you're, as long as you're naming your sprites and costumes the right things, the game should maintain being totally playable no matter what scene you put it in. So right now it's like a wandering samurai going through different backgrounds trying to unlock all the keys to get into a big boss room to fight um, that final boss and then win, get revenge or something like that. Um, and so when you do it, you can make it whatever sprites you want. There's some, I found a really good library of assets that works super well for this stuff, a bunch of sprites. And um, we've also been working on a new technique for getting sprite sheets you find on the internet into um, scratch sprites with very minimal effort. Yeah, and that's something I'm gonna be showing you in coming weeks then. So how to create your own sprites from sprite sheets that you find on the internet. Really cool, Jeffrey found this resource. Sorry, go ahead. And if you're not familiar, sprite sheets are just a very common system for for storing uh, like an animated um, costume where you have like yeah you have like 10 different costumes that make up something look like it's walking then how that like a sprite sheet is just all of those costumes laid out next to each other and scratch doesn't have any real way to turn that into an animation but you can then use other websites and then load that into scratch and we found a way to get it working quite well very cool so look forward to that in the coming weeks so jeffrey's in the middle of making it it's not too late to influence this project so if you have things that you want to see in this game you can change the way this game is going to work this is where you can interact with us right so if you have suggestions for jeffrey let us know on discord or it, uh, email me at info at chromeworks.ca and let us know what you would like to see in this RPG game. And if we get some good suggestions, we'll have Jeffrey modify the game. So it's, this is going to be happening over the course of three or four weeks probably. And as we're going along, we're, we're going to be taking your suggestions and adding them to the game as we go along. So, um, so I really I want you guys to see how we can go from idea to development with these games and how we can modify things to make them cool or just by putting new bells and whistles into the program. So um, you guys can look forward to that. So thanks a lot, Jeffrey. And we're going to be showing your game next week, at least this first part here that you've done. And then we'll keep building from there. So well, that's what you can look forward to next week. Thanks, Jeffrey. Okay. I'll see you guys. Okay. So, um... Anyway, uh, that's what we're up to. I think it's going to be a really exciting project, and I'm really looking forward to showing it to you guys. So I think that about wraps it up for this week's session, guys. I still um, don't know what you guys think of this new format. I'm not seeing a lot of kids logging in right now. We had much more traffic uh, during the summertime. Some of it has to do with you guys getting back to school. I'm going to see whether you guys are watching this after the fact or not. Uh, please get other people interested in this as well. So I've tried to make the, the broadcast a little bit simpler so that we're not getting into super complicated stuff that new scratchers are, are not able to understand. We were getting into, into some arcade stuff in the summer that was getting too complicated. So we're trying to simplify it down and then putting the more complex stuff into this taped broadcast. So if you just are interested in hanging out, learning a couple of things in Scratch, this is the place to be, the live stream that's going to be airing at 10 o'clock every Saturday. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to see you guys next week. 
and uh, please get your suggestions into me if you have any suggestions please um, go ahead and remix uh, the projects that we were looking at today steal my code and use those for your own projects as well if you like and um, until next week I'm gonna say bye to you